Hey everyone, welcome back to another FSD Beta 10.12.2 video. I've got a doozy for you today. Boy oh boy is this one interesting. I've talked about and shown how great version 10.12.2 is, how it's more confident, decisive, and smoother. Well, here's one where its confidence actually becomes detrimental. You'll see why in just a minute. Be sure to watch the whole video because I break down what happened and why. Now I said this in my last video, but I wanted to mention it again. All of your support, likes, subscriptions, it means a lot. I'm having a blast making videos and I hope you all are enjoying the content. If you are, leave a like and subscribe. Now let's get into the chaos. I mean, video. Uh, very bad visibility on the left here. Uh, so, wow, holy sh schnizer, my goodness. All right. Let's take another look at this real quick. First in real time to hear everything, then in slow motion. Tear. Uh, so. Wow, holy sh schnizer, my goodness. Watching this at a lower speed, FSD accelerates like crazy towards the crosswalk where a pedestrian had just finished crossing, audibly notifies a forward collision warning, and proceeds normally through the crosswalk. It's unclear to me why the car had a forward collision warning because throughout this it didn't visualize the pedestrian until after we got through the crosswalk. Random forward collision warnings have happened a handful of times on version 10.12.2 but this one was super unhelpful because it didn't signal there was actually anything in front of us we were going to run into. It's unfortunately a bit of a boy cried wolf situation. The more the car falsely has forward collision warnings, the less likely the driver will take them seriously. That's not a great situation to be in as a driver and again, why you always need to be paying attention. Yes. <laughs> that was, um, uh, wow, okay, good. <laughs> oh my God. Um, <laughs> That was, uh, that was intense, jeez. Uh, I was not expecting that acceleration. It just picked up like crazy. There was someone crossing the street. Uh, luckily they had already gone through. Um, the car's super eager to go through this red light here. I'm actually gonna push us through because we're kind of in the middle of the intersection here. Taking a left through this weird, wow, okay, the car's going right. Oh my God. Okay, so I recorded my audio for this section, and when I went to actually look at what happened in the video, I realized my analysis was wrong and something very different happened. At first, I thought the car misunderstood the navigation and just ended up going the wrong way, but in actuality, the map data was wrong and the car did exactly what the navigation told it to do. Now here's what I mean. For context, the red arrow points to where I was coming from on San Pablo Ave, in the intersection where I was stopped. The blue arrow is the street we immediately turned onto. Take careful note that it's Cedar Street. The green arrow is Hopkins Street and the purple arrow is the continuation of Cedar Street. I want to be very clear that you turn right onto Cedar Street, not Hopkins Street. Right here, I'm actually gonna push us through because we're kind of in the middle of the intersection here. Taking a left through this weird, wow, okay, the car's going right. If you look closely at the navigation after taking a right off of San Pablo, aka the red arrow, it claims we're taking a right onto Hopkins Street. This is blatantly false. We are actually taking a right onto Cedar Street. Now the navigation then again continues to tell the car to take a right on Hopkins Street, but Hopkins Street is actually a left. This is where the car gets confused. It knows Hopkins Street is to the left, but navigation is telling it that it needs to go right. So what's it supposed to do? In this case, it listened to navigation, which you're supposed to be able to trust, right? Well, unfortunately, not in this case. And this is exactly why Tesla is working to decouple FSD logic and navigation even further in future releases. It's a very similar problem to the cameras versus radar issue Tesla has talked about a lot in the past and is a big reason they now only use vision. Which do you trust in any given situation? 
What if radar says something's in front of you, but vision doesn't see anything or vice versa? Too many inputs is sometimes bad because they can become noise. This situation is exactly one of those. In this scenario, the car needed to trust its instincts and go left, even though navigation was incorrectly telling it to go right. Anyway, I hope this clears up any confusion around this. Now let's get back to the drive. Oh my God. Holy cow. The car is a maniac today. There was like, there was like nothing I could have done there. That happened, <laughs> that happened way faster than I could even react to. Um, so I'm trying to, I mean, my, I, I don't even know what to say. Um, oof, that, that just felt like a 16 year old driver having a joy ride like around town. My goodness. Um, yeah, the acceleration's kind of maybe uh, a bit much in this <laughs> in this build. It could definitely be toned down a bit in most situations. Um, obviously, there's a time and a place for uh, very fast acceleration uh, to get out of tricky situations, to get through you know certain um, certain uh, unprotected lefts or, or whatever it might be. Uh, all of the situations that the car just went through, where there was extreme acceleration were unnecessary. Um, okay, I guess, I guess that guy's just gonna, just gonna go. Uh, and I'm pushing it through because these bikers are maniacs, um, as well as the car being maniacs. They're being a maniac. Um, wow, that was uh, very unexpected and <laughs> unwise in my opinion. I, I would have hit the uh, report button had I had a little bit more time to process what was going on, but that that was all bang, 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 uh, decision, decision, decision. And I, so I do think before, and I might pause it and, and talk a little bit about it because a, a lot happened very quickly, or at least I, it felt like a lot was happening super quickly. But I think the car, uh, when there was that fork where it could go left or straight and it swung to the right and ended up going straight, I believe it was supposed to go left. Um, it would have made a lot more sense from a navigation perspective to go left because that's the road we're currently on right now. So instead we went right, then took a left, and then took a right to get back on this street. Um, so the car obviously got confused and luckily didn't hit the curb, uh, which it was very close to doing. Um, but it, in that situation, I personally, would have very much preferred the car to to go slower and and really figure out where it was trying to go more safely. Like it didn't need to immediately be doing 25 or 28, whatever the max speed limit was set to at that point. Um, it, it didn't need to be going that fast. It, it could have because we we pulled out and and it could have you know done you know 15 to accelerate into 25 a little bit more slowly. So that was not ideal behavior by any means. Uh, it's the car in front of us is turned to go. Okay, cool. So we're waiting, all good. Uh, waiting for our, a skateboarder as well. Um, and now we're going to commit, which is good. Um, oh man, deep breath, deep breath. Let's calm down. We're in the, we're in the not wild section anymore. We got some good lane lines and, and, and the car should know what it's doing at this point. Uh, that was an experience. That was a lot. That was one of the more uh, intense FSD exchanges or sections that, I, that I've ever witnessed. Um, wow. Whew. Uh, it makes the case for, for having a little bit tighter grip on the steering wheel, although Although the, the concern with having my hand firmer on the steering wheel in that case, and it did something erratic like that, is had I disengaged halfway between the decision it was, uh, between when it was deciding going left and straight in that case, it would have kept me in cruise control because I wouldn't have hit the brake, and there's a very good chance it wouldn't have stopped for the curb. So it's, there's kind of a weird, weird spot that FSD's in where it 
hit. Um, I'll take this opportunity to go because that biker kind of waved me on. But there, there's a weird spot that FSD's in where like it could make a really erratic decision. And while everything was fine there, had I freaked out and panicked and disengaged uh, with the steering wheel rather than the brake, which it's it's hard to know exactly which one to do in, in any given situation, um, but had I done the wrong one, um, I don't know where we're going right here. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, in that case, just follow the, the lead cars. Um, had it, had I done the wrong thing, uh, I would have, you know, hit the curb and, and been in a really awkward situation. So, um, oh my God, we were, again, like, Jesus, um, inches away from that, that thing there because we were going around the biker. My God, uh, this is, that was, again, another situation where like the car makes a decision faster than I have time to process. Uh, and, and because it's not visualizing those, those, um, curve thing, uh, the, the barriers there, it, um, okay, the car's taking a super wide, yeah, we were about to go over the curb. So I don't, it, it's, it's unclear. This is, I don't know what's going on with, with the bay right now. Um, this feels like different behavior from the last what is it, week and a half, two weeks now, uh, of FSD beta 10.12.2. It, it feels like one of those situations where they made a shadow update, they they adjusted some parameters, and the car is, is being significantly more aggressive than it was. And 10.12.2, mind you, was already exceptionally aggressive. So, the fact that it's it's feeling like it's being way more aggressive now than it than it uh, was even before is is, is like it's a lot. It's uh, it's yeah, it's it, it's a lot to say the least. So um, hopefully you could see uh, from the the way where the, the camera angle was that we were going we were going to go off a curb or off a curb I should say. Uh, and and get a little air time had I not taken over there uh, and it was another case of the car accelerating uh, more than it needed to um, to uh, uh, you know handle that so uh, you know in that in yeah it, I don't know I, maybe the, maybe it's just me maybe I need to like be a little more uh, brake heavy and I, I tend to be more like focused on what the steering wheel is doing and, and reacting there um, but uh, yeah it it uh, that, was, that was a couple close calls there as you saw in this video FSD made some funky decisions that caused me a bit of confusion admittedly the only thing it did wrong was trying to drive over the curb most of the way through the video but otherwise it technically drove within the lanes it was just a little too close for comfort in some situations as always if you made it this far thanks for watching if you enjoyed the content leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you all in the next video